Hello everyone and welcome back to another classic video. As anyone who enjoys working on his bikes, I love tools. But I find that not all tools are created equal. Some make such a huge difference that every time I use them, I can help but wonder how in the world did I ever manage without them. They not only make working on my bike easier, they also make it a lot more fun. I can think of five such tools in my workshop. So let's take a few minutes and review them together. At the top of my list is the rigid 18 volt inflator. A lot of people make fun of power tar inflators and dismiss them as gadget. As a matter of fact, I was very much in that camp until I bought one and found myself in a situation where I had to inflate and deflate a tire repeatedly in succession because I simply couldn't get it to seat properly. It's also great to pressurize my Bontrager flash can when installing a new tubeless tire. I have never gone back to using a manual pump since I bought the Rigid. As a matter of fact, all of my manual pumps have now been relegated to the forgotten corner of my workshop. There are quite a few brands out there that sell power inflators. I chose the Rigid for it looked and felt better made than the other model I was considering. Overall, I find it to be well-built, is easy to use, has good battery life, and boasts a large, easy-to-read 2-inch display. I like the Fast Connect Chuck. It also comes with hybrid option power. You can choose between the 18V rechargeable battery or a 12V power cord that plugs into a car cigarette lighter. It can inflate up to 150 psi, and lastly, it comes with a brass Presta chuck, a ball inflation needle, and an inflator nozzle. With the battery, which is sold separately, it will set you back about $100. That sport sprint bike stand comes in as a close second. I wanted a so-called Euro style stand for I didn't feel comfortable clamping on my old carbon BMC. I said all the feedback when I saw that most pros mechanic were using it. The stand is made of anodized aluminum and has a definite premium look and feel. Bikes attach to the stand by either the front or rear dropouts and it is outfitted with a block that accepts both skewers and through axles. It is very well made, can be folded into a manageable size and weighed in as a reasonable 13 pounds. It is a real pleasure to work on my bike with this stand. It is supremely stable allows you to rotate your bike 360 degrees so you can work on either side without having to move and the height of the stand can be adjusted making it a breeze to easily access even the most difficult to reach areas of your bike. The only bike I was not able to fit on this stand is my girlfriend Peugeot Mix because of the fenders. They stood in the way of the stand making it impossible to attach the dropouts to the block. At almost $300, it is not the cheapest stand out there, but its quality and durability makes it definitely worth the price. A solid third is the Yukon Nine Drawers Tool Storage Cabinet. I had been looking for an affordable way to organize my tools for a while. When I saw the Yukon for just under $300, I decided to pull the trigger. Due to its low price, I was expecting the quality to be a bit on the cheap side. But that is not so. The overall quality of this unit is quite good. 
It has an all-around solid feel and comes with a nice wood top and nine drawers, each fitted with tool mats. The opening and closing action of the drawers is buttery smooth and the paint job looks great. My only complaint is that it only has directional wheels and a handle on one side, making it difficult and frustrating to move around, particularly when fully loaded. But overall, it has exceeded my expectation. I no longer waste any time looking for any of my tools and my workshop is better organized and less cluttered. I place the Freight Harbor 47 parts bins in fourth. If like me, you do most of the work on your bikes by yourself, including complete rebuild, then you need a parts organizer. I personally would not even consider doing a complete bike disassembly without one. It makes keeping track of all the various parts easy and speeds up the assembly process. The two different sizes of bins and the three different colors make organizing your parts a bit easier too. It does feel a bit on the cheap side, however, and requires to be assembled, but at the end of the day, it does its job just fine. Since I began using this parts bin, I've not yet lost or mixed a single part and I entirely attribute this to my parts bin. At roughly $90, it is affordable and the 47 bins are more than enough to accommodate any bike job, even complete disassembly. In fifth place come the Junior Tire Seating Tool. I love restoring and riding vintage road bikes, but if there is one thing that has been frustrating me to no end is how difficult it is to properly seat a tire on a 27 one and a quarter wheel, which is the wheel size of most vintage bikes. I have tried absolutely everything, different tire and rim manufacturers, putting soap on the tire bead, over-inflating the tire, but nothing would do until I bought a Junior tire sitting tool. I was finally able to get rid of that wobbly and uncomfortable ride that comes with an improperly seated tire. If I were not into vintage bikes, I would not even know this tool existed. But if you are into vintage bikes, then a tire sitting tool is a must. At $50, it isn't cheap but it is the only thing I found that would do the job consistently. Park tools make one as well, but I bought the Junior for it was a bit cheaper. So there you have it, the five favorite tools in my workshop. So be well, stay safe, and see you soon.